In this video, I took a gamble. I had no idea it was gonna work. I enjoy a drink, and I switched something on. It's Da Vinci time. So I've been testing the EB150 for a few months now, and one thing I mentioned in the previous video has been a real challenge when it comes to food. The next improvement for me has to be the inverter, so moving it from 1000 watts continuous somewhere in the region of 1500 watts would be great, and also moving that peak from 1200 watts to 2000 plus, again it's only for a short time, and not only that, that opens up larger appliances, so something like a microwave, the larger microwaves, so that you can run that in your RV, in your camper, and also at home during a power outage, just things like that. I mean, it does run most things in my house, so I can't really complain, so it's just a small improvement which would make this a little bit better. Whether you're a prepper, camper, or someone that just wants to cover the odd power cut, this might be useful, so here it goes. Right, so time for a spot of lunch now. So I've got all my bits in front of me to make a fried egg roll with some salady bits here to go with it. So let's just make sure that this is on. So that's on, ready to go. We'll switch this on and turn it down to 900. Get that on there straight away. And as you can hear the sound of the way the induction bit works in this. So we've got it pulsing up now while it's heating up the pan. So I'll give that a few seconds to uh, warm up. So we'll keep it on the 900 watt mark. Again, to keep inside the inverter's limit. So I've got the bigger frying pan here. I actually have a smaller one of these induction uh, frying pans as well. So that's warming up nicely. I'm going to put a bit of rapeseed oil in here. Ready to warm up. And put the egg in. Takes a couple of minutes to warm up. See, nicely warmed up, cooking away now. Got a few seconds. This is still on 900 watts and it's as you can see it's frying perfectly. Switch that off now and give it a chance to uh, shut itself down properly. And there we have it. Fried egg sandwich, sorted. So to get the most out of induction cooking and the hob that I've just shown you, you really need the right cookware. This is my five piece set that I've had for almost 10 years now and it's still going strong. And although it was designed with induction in mind, it works equally well on gas, which I use every day, and also standard electric hobs, so places where I've lived before. 
So this is really the basis what you need for induction cooking. So the only real difference between these and normal pots and pans is the base. So the base is thicker and it's heavier, so it works better on induction hobs. But apart from that, everything else is the same. It's got standard non-stick services you would expect to see in normal pots and pans. I must say that I'm really impressed with this particular make and the way it's lasted and the fact that it comes with a lifetime guarantee. But the choices out there are vast and if you want to go down the induction cooking route, you have plenty to choose from on Amazon and more than enough reviews to look through. But what I'll do is I'll put the links to these in the description below and you can buy these individually as well depending on where you're likely to use the hob and if you're going out in your RV or you're camping somewhere and you want to try out induction cooking because the hob itself is actually quite cheap. I love popcorn, it's as simple as that. And combine that with one of my favourite movies and I've got the perfect evening. So what better way to test the EB150 than to make some fresh popcorn using this Swan Hot Air Popcorn Maker. This is a 900 watt version, so that's great for this because it falls under the AC inverter limit. Um, although I like this particular popcorn maker, I wouldn't recommend it because it does have a habit of firing everything that is made all over the place. So probably not the best in uh, design terms, but it still does the job and there might be a few rogues to pick up as you'll see in a minute. So here goes. So apart from a few rogues to pick up, fresh to eat popcorn. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, time to cook up some pasta now. I've got some uh, quick cook stuff here from Sainsbury's. I have uh, an induction saucepan here as part of my set and that's got cold water and some olive oil in there to stop the pasta sticking together. I have one wooden spoon. Uh, this is switched on, so let's get this powered on and then switched on to 900. Again, so it's within this and get this on here. Okay, so I think that is now coming on. The fans now come on in here and it should start pulsing again as it does to heat up uh, the water. And then once that takes, well, we'll take a little bit of time. And once that's done, um, we can put the pasta in and then see if it really does cook within four minutes. So I'm going to fast forward this bit. So as expected, uh, it did take a while to boil, but it's uh, boiling now. So let's get some pasta in there. done let's bring that back up to the boil and then I will start the timer okay timer set for four minutes now it's back to the boil Well, there's the timer. Let's switch it off. So I'm gonna go and drain this somewhere else and I'll be right back. 
all drained off now. And there we have it. Perfectly cooked mm. pasta. So this is the appropriately named Sun Avo induction hob. And this is rated at 2000 watts. So in terms of the EB150's inverter limit of 1000 watts, it's way over. But while I was doing my research on Amazon into these kind of hobs, I noticed that they were controllable. So I made a bit of an assumption that I could actually turn it down enough to bring it inside the inverter's limits. I had no idea it was gonna work. And initially, when I switched it on, this happened. So I literally switched on the unit, switched on the AC inverter and waited because it's a soft start inverter so it takes a few seconds to, to heat up. And I was presented with this error, E014, which is actually short circuit protection. So I thought something was actually wrong with the induction hob. So I tried it a few times and the same result. So in the end, I plugged it into a normal main socket and it worked. So then I had to go the trial and error route because I knew it worked in the main socket. So I was determined to get this working on here. So what I did was I switched off the AC inverter. So again, that resets it, switched it on again. But this time I just held down the on off button so that when the slow start kicked into action, um, it actually made it so it switched it straight off, allowing it to basically start up and get ready to use. So we got a little flashing light on the on and off button now. And that's effectively how I fix this particular issue. So that's how I was able to start cooking and using this as a normal hob. The other way I have found of also dealing with the uh, short circuit trip here is just to make sure that this is switched on and it's started up before plugging in. Because once you plug in, it should then in theory just start up, which it's done just then. So there's no trip out now. So that's the other way that you can do it as well. The other thing I've noticed as well is if you switch it on before you actually put anything on, it seems to work better that way. So if we switch it on, select that, turn it down to 900, and then that will scream at you because you haven't got anything on there. Then put that on there, and then that will start cooking, as you can see on here. So if you do push this to 1,000 watts or more, what happens is the power draw from here remains constant. So because this runs at about 1,070 odd watts when it's drawing power, that actually goes over the limit of the 1,000 watt inverter. And that's okay for up to two minutes. So it can go between 1,000 and 1,200 watts for a maximum of two minutes before the inverter cuts out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you what happens when you do that. All right, let's get this switched on and get the 1,000 watt test going. So that's now set straight to 1000 watts. Let's put something on here. And now let's see how long this lasts for. So as you can see, it's around the 170 watt. And as you can see, it's not dropping down. So it's not pulsing like it does with the 900 watts. It's just remaining constant. So we'll see how long it lasts. So it says it can last up to two minutes. And there we go. It has tripped out with an E013, which is overload protection of the inverter. So there we have it. So it can only last for two minutes. So that's why 900 watts on this and the pulse effect keeps it under that two minute window and gives you a working solution. Right, time to do something typically British now and the way the rest of the world sees us and have some tea and crumpets. You can hear a whirring in the background that that's my electric cool box keeping the milk and butter cool. Uh, as you can see, it's already plugged in here and using the uh, DC amount that's on screen at the moment. Uh, I need to switch that DC port off before I start to use uh, any of the uh, AC stuff because it'll draw too much and it'll cause the port to trip out. So I'll switch that off before I get going. I'm going to get the tea done first. I've filled the kettle all the way up. So this shows you how long it takes to actually boil the whole kettle in this case. So this is a, I think this is a one litre maximum on this uh, sort of like camping kettle. So I think it's about 830 watts. 
and then the toaster uh, which you've seen before uh, I'm going to just use the two ports to do two uh, crumpets in that and uh, that's been used before so that should work no problems at all so let's switch off the DC port now so you hear that's gone to sleep and now let's get on and switch the kettle on and see how long that takes and as you can see that's drawing about 835 watts so on the money for that Okay, that's uh, boiled now. So let's get, uh, unfortunately this kettle's a little bit uh, difficult to pour, but uh, if you do it slow enough, it works perfectly well. Right, there we go. So let's move that out of the way now. We finish with that. And while we get that brewing, let's get straight on with the uh, crumpets. Leave that to brew. While those are cooking and that's brewing, I'm just gonna get the other bits out. Time to uh, sort the tea out. So, one cup of tea. Waiting on the crumpets now. Oh, a perfect copper. And there you have it. Great British favourite. Crumpets and tea. Just try it out. Perfect. We hope you liked our video. All the links you'll need to be in the description below. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And stay tuned to Dad Vinci.